And now back to your regularly scheduled program. That's terrifying. Yeah. Is it weird that I think I'm glad Josh is dead? Mm, yeah, no, I don't think so. I don't think it's weird. Considering all that happened. Oh, fuck. <laughs> yeah, that. I've seen that coming. Oh, shoot. You're getting close. I got this. Triangle. Square. Triangle. Square. square. Oh fuck. I did super this was square. I always forget which one's which. <laughs> ah. Sorry I'm failing so much. Not triangle. Square. Triangle. Square. Square. Triangle. Square. Triangle. Square. Square. Yes. Okay, thank God. Here we go. Success! Should we... Oh, come on. There's a path. Two different paths. Which one are you gonna take? Yeah, nice try. I know. When in doubt, go right. Seems like the right thing to do. Oh, wait, I think they go. <laughs> Did you jump that time? No. I'm not scared of the bird. <laughs> sure you are. You are scared of birds. Sure I am. You go back and check the path for secrets, but I don't want to waste too much time. <laughs> I mean, if you want to, you can. I'm good. I've already made it down this far, so... <laughs> It must be really cold. Really cold. Especially with the winter time. And... Ooh. Yeah. Uh. That sounded very bad. Very, very bad. Let's get out of here as fast as possible. I know, I'm working on it. <laughs> you think I'm working on it? I mean, I know you're working on it, but I'm just saying, like, let's get out of here as fast as possible. Yeah. <laughs> I can see you conducting. <laughs> mm -hmm. Oh, no. I don't know either. Scary case. Oh, great. 
And of course the door's locked. Oh, come on, of course. Guys, come on, are you in there? Come in! Sam. Oh gosh. Mike. Oh gosh. You look terrible. It's just good old Mike. Gonna look worse if we stay out here. Come on. Good old friendly Mike. <laughs> Mike, what happened to Josh? I got him. God, what an awful way to go. Not good. What do you think we should do? We should check the basement. Might be someone left down there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, if anything, Ashley probably made it back. Yeah, probably. Right. Right. I don't like the way you said that. Seven does <laughs> I'm trying to think about it. <laughs> 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 no, hey, he's good. Oh, snap. Run, run. Uh -oh. from watching it. Yeah. Oh, oh, the gas. Um, Mike? I'm sure he would understand. <laughs> I'm sure he would too. And thus, it's gone!
We have completed. Yep. With Ashley and Sam as our only survivors. Yep. Time of death, 4.30. No! Mm -hmm. no. 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 A nice little recap. It was my fault Mike died. I wasn't supposed to move. But I did. And he saved me. So it's my fault that he died. I... I, I stabbed him and I tried to get away, but I didn't know. I swear I didn't know. Didn't know? Who did you stab? Oh, I, I, I stabbed the maniac. I didn't know it was Josh, but then he was the psycho. How was I supposed to know Josh had all the sauce and the gun and the gun? You need to listen to me. I don't care if you believe me or not. It doesn't matter because you will. You need to go down to the mines. What's in the mines, Sam? I've seen what's down there. And I'd give anything to unsee it. Uh, it's been a while since we heard this. Yeah. Wow. Yep. <laughs> what a way to end this series right. Indeed. I must say, this... This was fun. That was fun. <laughs> <laughs> Hearing you was fun. Scaring you was fun too. Oh, you didn't scare me. Oh, really? <laughs> really? All right, comment down below <laughs> if I scared her or not. <laughs> Spoiler alert: I did. <laughs> <laughs> All right, fine. I did. You scared me like two or three times. Fair enough. <laughs> I'd say at least two or three times. Yeah. <laughs> Only two or three times. Maybe four. Who knows? <laughs> I wasn't cussed. Me neither. <laughs> so I don't remember which scare was from the game or from you, so... <laughs> True. You were scared of birds. They were birds. <laughs> they were just birds. They were birds. <laughs> it's not that big a deal. <laughs> it shouldn't be that scary. I know. I can't believe I was scared of birds. I can't believe that either. And we're skipping the credits. We get a post credit scene. Oh. No, we do not. Nope. <laughs> Let's check our status, actually. So we didn't find all of the... Like, all of the clues. 13 and 20. 
Oh, there's a lot of them. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. I missed seven clues out of 20. Okay. That's crazy. That is crazy. Man. I know I didn't get all the totems. Yeah. Yeah, I didn't. I only got one last, one, one last totem. Really? I found most of for, most. I think mostly of fortune totems. To fortune and danger, I think. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Butterfly effect. Hmm. One's written or left. Missed out on two. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, I forgot you can flip through these. Yeah. The result of the chaos. Mm -hmm. hmm. Yeah, we've bon there's bonus content. <laughs> yeah. Those windigos are scary though. They are. Because Until Dawn has a dynamic, ever-changing story, the facial performances and the body performances are recorded separately, with different systems. With the body capture, we use reflective bead suits and an infrared camera matrix system that drives the CG bone hierarchies in our character models. Just roaming around that kind of suit, just to uh, capture action. Character locomotion, yeah. scene specific performances, <laughs> and stunt work, most of which was recorded at studios in Pinewood and Shepperton, near London. Hannah! Hello? Combining all the elements seamlessly in the final game becomes a formidable editing and logistical task. Every variation, both physical and emotional, must be combined in these multi edits. Wow. Wow, indeed. <laughs> Scaffolding props have to stand in for the sets, because the hundreds of infrared cameras have to be able to see all of the reflective beads on the actor. Nice. My name is Will Biles, Executive Creative Director of Until Dawn. The first part of getting a believable facial performance in-game is to capture topographically the actor's range of emotional expressions as separate versions of the same head. Every tiny nuance gets digitized and merged, effectively creating a model that can recreate every facial movement that the actor makes. That's cool. That is cool. Once the topography has been recorded, the actor's performance itself can be captured by using a predetermined set of marker points drawn precisely on the face and a high def helmet cap wirelessly linked to capture devices. The camera is the small box where it looks like the microphone should be. It records in high def the movement of the dots throughout the performance that will drive the expressions captured earlier. Unlike other systems, this form of capture is far less lossy because there are fewer interpretations between performance captured and performance rendered finally in game. The audio is also recorded via two separate Lavalier mics attached to the helmet. It takes a while for the actors to acclimatize to carrying around the recording devices and the helmet cams, but very soon the shoot becomes similar to any other effects shoot or a green screen shoot. The actors in these scenes are only recording facial animation, but use cursory body movements for pacing. Wait, and maybe we should all stick together and find everybody, make sure that we're all okay, so... 1-1, one, one, the year before the prank. Take two, Mark. 
<laughs> other than the other actors, they have to use their imagination for everything and everywhere that they are supposed to be seeing and feeling. That would be alright. Mm -hmm. From a hot midday studio in Los Angeles to a freezing midnight mountain in British Columbia. Let's show how much effort is put into these kinds of things. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I keep pressing this. That's okay. <laughs> a little bonus for completing the game, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Jason Graves, and I'm the composer for Until Dawn. I've been involved with Until Dawn for about a year now. Originally, I was contacted by Barney Pratt, the audio director. I think that had something to do with my lineage of horror games, and hopefully, not the fact that my last name is Graves, although a lot of people seem to associate my name with scary music. <laughs> Graves. Yep. One of the things that was really exciting about working with Barney and the team at Supermassive is they really wanted something unique for the music. They wanted the music to stand out and be a character on its own in the game. It's a nice when I'm first starting on a new score, and it doesn't matter if it's film, television, or games, I always end up going to the main theme. Sometimes the developer or producer isn't even necessarily interested in the main theme at the beginning. I just want to do it for myself, because for me, the main theme is the identity of the game. It establishes the mood, the atmosphere, and the character of the music, and how it's going to be playing in the background. And that's what we did with Until Dawn. That was actually my demo pitch to Supermassive Games. I put a main theme together, recorded all the instruments at my studio, and sent it to them, and they liked it. We actually ended up recording that exact theme, all the instruments and everything, live here at Ocean Way, probably nine months ago. And that's what we've been using in all the demos for the game, and that's the final version of the theme that is the main theme that you'll hear on the menus and in some key pieces of the gameplay. <laughs> A good main theme. It really is. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I seem to have made a name for myself in horror. And there's something about scary music, I think it's maybe the lack of rules. But the biggest rule in scary music is there are no rules, so you can do anything you want. And actually, if you end up True that. Music, don't yep. feel like they would work out together, they kind of clash and it ends up being even more effective for scary music. So that's what really drew me to Until Dawn was the textures plus writing thematic material that is interwoven with the scary textures. I haven't really done anything like that before. Usually it was just all, all tension all the time, and that's fun, and it's great. But I'm actually at heart a very melodic composer. That's the kind of music I love listening to, and that's the kind of music I love writing. That's the kind of music I got to work on in Until Dawn. Nice. <laughs> Until Dawn is a game that's full of horror 
And one of the things we decided to do early on was to take a scientific approach to how scary it was. So we did experiments <laughs> on people and we measured their responses to the game. We've created a test area. It's as close to a home setup as we can get it. We've recruited ordinary people to play the game and we've left them to play it on their own. Turn the light on. <laughs> tested in the dark. Yep. The only difference is it's rigged with cameras and microphones that relay the data through to the next room where people are watching them play. The bracelet here we use for biometric testing. It measures the player's emotional response. It's called a galvanic response sensor. It makes contact with the user's skin and it measures the electrical conductivity across their skin. It's the same principle as an old-fashioned lie detector. When you're, when you're stressed, you sweat a little, very sensitive picks up tiny changes if the player is feeling anxious or scared. That data is fed back to a testing team, comes through as a graph. no point testing one or two people you have to test a lot of people when we have a scare that's consistently has a measurable emotional response then we knew it was good if it didn't have that it goes back to the team for improvement the data doesn't tell us what's wrong with the scare it only tells us if it's working or not here we have a chapter relatively early in the game Nothing regular about it. We have to create tension and anxiety in the player so they are ready to, to receive the scare. player time to recover, to cool down, to calm down and then start building the tension again before we do the next scare. Hey. Uh, what? Hey. What the hell? Oh, you just got mugged. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. 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 Yeah, There's two things we found. One, one is we could look at the scares, analyse if our expected scares were working effectively. Were people shrieking and covering their hands or were they getting an emotional response from it? And being scientific about it means that we strip out people's opinions about whether things are working or not. We've got data and we look at the data. If it's working, we're happy with it. That's a good way to go look at it. Yeah. I actually maybe a bit scared to be on my own, but you know, when the lights on, yeah, with some other people as well, yeah, maybe. Because I'm a scaredy cat, I would play for someone as well. And the lights on. It was one of the scariest games I've played in a long while. Hi, this is Lee Robinson, production designer on Until Dawn. The production design for Until Dawn started with the great teen horror script that sets the characters in a Canadian winter mountain lodge, being a contemporary setting with visual clues derived from classic films of that genre, such as Hitchcock's Psycho and Stanley Kubrick's Shining. Nice. The storyboards are vital to the production design as it allows the designer to understand the scale of the environments to be made and the detail that would be seen to create the atmosphere of a horror. This took us into concepts that took these storyboards further, visualizing the world through the color palette, the lighting, tone, and the mood, and developing key locations such as the lodge, the cable car stations, the forests themselves, the wilderness. As you can see, the environments and atmospheres changed quite a bit from warm and inviting to cold and threatening. The Millionaire's Mountain Lodge was a key example. It was designed to be made from nearby stone and timber, embedding it into the landscape, with a contrasting and contemporary interior needing to be opulent and extravagant. We created dark and claustrophobic corridors with ominous and large open spaces, almost cathedral-like in size, and with huge structures to silhouette and dwarf the characters within, providing a labyrinth to explore and wander. 
Each character was developed with a strong visual identity in mind, with contrasting colors, tones, and silhouettes to identify them, each to have their own texture, pattern, and shape, so that when they were lined up, you could always identify them. The costume designs cool. allowed a range of that clothes really cool. that would suit them for the cold winter weather, but also have an element of style and individualism, so that the audience could look at them and relate, recognizing themselves within them. A lady would like to cuddle up with her man by a nice cozy fire bathed in atmospheric mood lighting. Right. Well, it'll get plenty toasty once we're rubbing up against each other. My yeah. fires and mood lighting. Yes. Working with the lighting artists, you really <laughs> put the look and feel of the world together. And this required a thorough understanding of the visual language of teen horror. A key scene was where all the characters emerge out of the rear of the lodge chasing Hannah. A contrast is evident straight away from the exterior wilderness to the warmth of the lodge. The attention to character lighting here is through the bounce and rim lighting, accented colors and composition, creating characters that come from the dark into the light and back again with an emotional effect. Guys! There's someone outside. What the hell? Hannah! What's going on? Where's my sister going? <sighs> it's fine. She just can't take a joke. It was just a prank, Hannah. Right. Right. A prank that led to her death. Mm -hmm. Hi, Larry. Hey, Graham. <laughs> Hi, my name is Graham Resnick. I'm a filmmaker, writer, director, sound designer, and uh, I started working with Larry Fessenden about 10, 15 years ago through my friend Ty West, who I grew up with, and uh, have done a lot of sound design with on his films. And uh, he was producing Ty's films at the time, and uh, Ty introduced me to Larry. Larry produced my first feature, and we've written together on several projects. My name is Larry Fessenden. I'm a filmmaker. I, uh, I run Glass Eye Picks, which is um, an independent production company out of New York. We make indie movies, uh, a lot of scary movies as well. Um, and uh, I got a call to audition to write uh, this video game. And uh, I called my pal Graham Resnick because Graham's a gamer. And um, while I thought I could offer something to the idea of writing this multi-branching story, I knew that I would want Graham's expertise as a lover of uh, gameplay since I guess games were started. So, and, and, and just as a lover. That's and as a lover, a lover yes. Which is <laughs> 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 so why there's so many sex jokes in the, yeah. in the game. There was one Italian website that did say the oh, that's right. and Graham Resnick, the two lovers behind <laughs> Until Dawn. <laughs> Maybe I know how to handle you too. I am definitely ready to be handled. So I wanted Graham by my side. Uh, yeah, and we we got the gig, and it was it's been an amazing ride. Oh hell yeah! Oh my God, she's taking her shirt off. What? Oh my God, Matt, what are you doing here? Uh, Hannah. I'm sorry, Hannah. It's all gonna be just. So in the game, the, the basic setup is that uh, a year prior to the game's start, all these kids had gone up to a, a ski lodge that was owned by the parents of one of the kids, uh, or a couple of the kids, and um, some of the teenagers played a prank on some of the other teenagers, and a terrible tragedy occurred when a few of them, uh, two sisters, ran out into a blizzard, and uh, were never seen from again. <laughs> So now, a year later, uh, this has kind of torn apart this group of friends. They've, uh, they've gone through some trials and tribulations in the past year. The brother of the two girls has uh, had a lot of psychological issues. And, and to kind of help him cope uh, and help them all get over it, they all return to the lodge a year later, back up on the mountain. And uh, the idea is to, to get over it, but... Um, the healing does not begin. <laughs> Yeah. And these kids are all trying to find themselves. They've, they've, they've been through a trauma, but in general, they're just teenagers trying to figure out who they are. So they're all kind of falling into the patterns, the, the stereotypes, the, the characters they see on TV and in the movies. I think we were very interested in taking genre tropes and kind of making them 
uh, sort of refresh them. Hey, did you see that? Dad said it'd just be us this weekend. We're familiar with how slasher movies work. Uh, you know, most people have seen some horror movies, and we have established notions and preconceptions about the roles of the players in horror movies and how they talk and how they get killed and how they have sex. And to bring you into the game that way and then subvert a lot of those expectations is kind of our, our goal. They're haunted by some incidents that happened in their past, which I think you pretty much figure out that that's going to have a role in their, uh, in their interaction. Yeah, so I think what was fun was we take some sort of stock characters and we try to give them some shape, but um, at least at the beginning they're recognizable in the, um, in the way of groups of friends. There's, you know, the jock and the, um, and the bitchy girl and the rivalries between everyone. And <laughs> oh my gosh. And really fun characters too. It's just, it's, we just had so much fun living in the minds of these characters through writing the, writing the script. What do you think? <laughs> Jesus! You know, it was fun. We, I think we were looking to get that kind of banter that you yeah. see both in movies, but also that you absolutely have with friends and sort of those inside jokes. And of course, as writers and as friends ourselves, we sort of developed little tracks and we tried to give the characters that kind of vibe. All right. All right. Well, hope you guys enjoyed. Wait, is there one more? Like, we, we still have these two, and then I don't know if we watched the first one yet. <laughs> I think we actually did watch the first one. Yeah. You want to do the last two, or do you want to leave? It's up to you. <laughs> it's really up to you. I'm going to watch these anyway, so. Fair enough. <laughs> All right, you know what? We're just going to end this series off right, so... All right. Well, hope you guys enjoyed this series. If you did, like and subscribe for more content. Comment down below what you guys want us to play next. Then click on the notification bell to be notified when I post a new video. That being said, um, any other final words before we close this off? <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't think of better words to go with. So that being said, stay home. Stay safe, keep the comments clean and healthy, and as always, see y'all. See ya. Bye. Bye.